Usually, when we talk about coronavirus, we focus on the lives lost, the economy, and jobs. But the truth is, this pandemic is changing our world in a million different ways. And one of those ways is how higher education is functioning. And we're gonna learn all about that in our new segment, College in the Time of Corona. In normal times, college is one of the greatest periods in a young person's life. You make your closest friends, you soak up exciting new ideas, you have your athletic abilities financially exploited. But all that changed this year when COVID-19 hit and campuses across the country shut down like this. The sudden closure of college campuses across the country over the coronavirus sent millions of students home early. These students barely had any time to pack up their things and leave. A lot of folks said that they had to leave their belongings on campus. I got a call on Sunday sort of saying, like, it's time to go. So I didn't really have time to say goodbye to anyone. We didn't have any boxes. We were throwing things in garbage bags and trying to drag them down the hall. Man. That has got to suck so much. Can you imagine? One minute you're in school, and the next thing, your stuff is in trash bags, and you're on the streets, which is pretty rough. I mean, the last person who had to leave college that quickly was Aunt Becky's daughter. Having your university shut down instantly is not a normal thing. I mean, except at Trump University. Okay, class, uh, today we're gonna be learning about business finance, and the most important thing you wanna... Oh, shit, it's the cop. We gotta go, we gotta go! But even though students are no longer at school, they're still supposed to be going to class. And students are quickly being confronted with the reality that online learning is a little different than the real thing. College classes that once looked like this now look like this. Students say they miss interacting with professors and campus resources such as libraries and study groups are gone. Students claim that online instruction is far below the classroom experience. They suck. Literally, they suck. We're now um, obligated to spend about half of our day uh, Zooming our teachers. If you're in like a 200 person lecture and like one person forgets to mute themselves, then it, that's just like chaos. Some even getting Zoom bombed in this class by a clown. During a remote learning class, the University of Miami instructor shared his screen with the students. The main page had that, that day's lessons, but some eagle eyed students spotted the words busty college girl at the top of his screen. Yeah, during a college Zoom lecture, uh, the students noticed that their lecturer who was sharing his screen had a tab open for busty college girl. And that is so embarrassing. I mean, who still uses the word busty? What are you searching for porn in the 1920s? Looking for busty flapper gals. Now, to be fair, to be fair, we might not know the whole story, right? because tabs get cut off all the time on a computer. Yeah, maybe that browsing tab says busty college girl, but then when you see the full website name, it's actually how to respect and act appropriately around busty college girls. We don't know, we know. But yeah, students are quickly learning that online college is just not as good as the real thing. It's kind of like how online gambling is not like the real thing. I mean, yeah, you can lose your money, but if someone's not there to break your legs, then what's the point? And here's the other thing about online classes. Even if they go well, classes are not the only important thing about going to college. Students and families pay huge tuitions because they want the entire college experience. And now that they're not getting it, they want some of that money back. Protesters are taking aim at colleges and universities. Students picketing schools, saying they're not getting what they paid for. They filed class action lawsuits demanding partial tuition refunds. One claims online learning is subpar in practically every aspect. We have to pay $55,000 for the same, basically the same thing you could find on a Coursera or edX for, for $50. I totally get why these college students want their money back. I mean, imagine paying for Yale but instead, now you're getting University of Phoenix. It's like buying a ticket to see a movie starring Tom Cruise, and then you get there, and they show on starring Ted Cruz. You gotta refund my popcorn at least. And it's so unfair that these students aren't gonna get their money back when their professors are so rich that they can even afford elbow patches for their jackets. I mean, that's not fair. And why are they protecting their elbows anyway? They're not rollerblading. So, right now, because of coronavirus, college has become much less appealing. And because enrollments have dropped so much for next year, 
colleges have gotten desperate, so desperate that they're willing to accept students that they never previously would have even considered. Which means shit's gonna get really interesting next semester. My son got into Harvard because he got perfect SAT scores. Oh, my son got into Harvard from a Groupon. So now, May is here. And this weird, unprecedented school year is coming to an end. And the good news is, while the class of 2020 may not have gotten everything they might have wanted out of their final semester, they're still finding innovative ways to make graduation day as special as possible. Trent Johnson went to Ohio State University, but the school didn't hold commencement. So Johnson walked across his family's living room <laughs> instead. One business school in Japan getting creative. The graduating students take a virtual walk across the stage to receive their diplomas as robot avatars. Students are holding their own graduation ceremonies on popular games like Animal Crossing. UC Berkeley's class of 2020 is getting creative when it comes to celebrating their achievements. We are recreating the entire UC Berkeley campus in Minecraft to host a commencement ceremony. It's going to be an open day for everyone to just explore campus, kind of relive their memories, take photos. I'm imagining just the entire campus-wide party. Bravo. These kids recreated their entire campus in a Minecraft video game? They did this just so that they could get together for one last hurrah. And you know, this reminds me of when I spent a semester studying abroad in the Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> Young love, j'attem Bowser, j'attem. Now, if you're not lucky enough to have gone to a school that's figured out how to throw a whole commencement inside a video game, you can still have a kick-ass graduation because celebrities everywhere are getting together to do virtual commencement addresses for the entire class of 2020. Like Oprah is doing one with help from Simone Biles, Lil Nas X, and Miley Cyrus. President Obama, he's giving one with LeBron James and Malala. Yeah, that's super cool. Although it's gonna be tricky to watch an Obama speech over Zoom because you'll never know if he's buffering or just pausing for effect. And to all the young kids out there, uh, you gotta, uh... Mom, you gotta restart the router. Follow your dreams. Never mind. And I'm not gonna lie, man. These virtual commencement addresses, they seem like a really cool idea. So we at The Daily Show, well, we thought we would share our own inspirational message for the class of 2020. Well, class of 2020, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. At home. At home. At home. I'm stuck in a hotel room in Bulgaria. And I know this wasn't the graduation you were expecting. You thought you'd be with your fellow graduates on the campus lawn, hung over from the night before, trying to figure out how to break up with your boyfriend who wants to follow you to the big city. But instead, we're meeting on Zoom and judging everyone's living room furniture. And I know some of you are worried that this pandemic might stop you from reaching your dreams. But I want you to know that even without this pandemic, nobody reaches their dreams. Nobody. Most people just end up doing a job they don't hate until they retire. It's just life. You think my dream was to work on this show? I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be a dancer. I wanted to be a dinosaur. I wanted to not live in a hotel room in Bulgaria. The concierge is a horse. And the fact is, the story of your life is still being written. This is just one chapter in your life, a life that will no doubt be filled with many other pandemics. But remember, you have so much to look forward to, like the year 2025. I think this shit will have died down by then. And once this is all over, your class will make a huge difference in the world. Statistically speaking, 10% of you will go on to lead companies. The rest of you will probably murder someone. So, great things await you. Until then, Use this time to travel. Go on an adventure to like, I don't know, the other side of the hotel room. Explore the really far corners of your backyard. I heard somebody's buried there. Visit the attic of your house. You know, find your mom's old journal that says that your dad wasn't her first choice, but she decided to settle for him anyway because eye doctors make great money and that she would learn to love his nipple hair. And as you go out into the world, Remember all the people who touched you along the way. Because those are probably the assholes spreading this virus. Why are they going around touching everybody? Let me tell you something. If you try to touch me, I'm gonna 
And as you move forward in life, the most important piece of advice I can give you is this. You are much stronger than you think. Just like that off-brand toilet paper you found on the dark web. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Help me get out of this hotel. For real, call the embassy.